Hi there, this is Christopher, and today I want to show you how you can verify an origin stamp timestamp. First of all, we have to have something that we can verify. So we go over to Pexels and download a random image. And once we've got that, we go back to origin stamp and drag and drop this file for timestamping. And then we have to wait until the timestamp is ready. In this case, we will wait for the Ethereum timestamp because we will verify the Ethereum certificate. See you in a minute. Okay, we are back. And as you can see, the Ethereum timestamp is ready. Next step would be to download the certificate and then open it up. If you look at your Ethereum certificate, you will notice that the certificate contains three pages. But really, the proof is in the first and second page. And on the second page, we will start with a row that contains the type hash. And the hash that is there, the value should be the hash of your original document. So let's verify that. If you Google for an SHA-256 file checksum calculator, you will find many online tools that you can use, which are independent of origin stamp. And I found one here. And to demonstrate how it works, I will just drag and drop the file that we previously submitted to origin stamp. And you will immediately see the hash. The value is here, and it ends with 114E. Now, if you go back to the Ethereum certificate, you will see that indeed it's the same hash. So the hash is in the certificate. That's the first step. So what we want to do in our proof is that we want to prove that our hash, which is here, that this hash is included under the root hash, and the root hash is here, it's of type key, and it has this value. And we can prove that our hash is included under this root hash by merging and then hashing all these smaller hashes that are listed here in a specific order. And I'll show you how to do that. Actually, it's quite simple, but I guess you have to see it once to really understand it. We will start with the certificate, and we will look at the two rows which are indented the most. And you can see our original hash is in there. And we have a so-called partner hash, which is on the left. You can see here, it's on the left. And what's now important is that we copy the one which is on the left first. And then I found another SHA-256 calculator online, which allows us to paste text. And here, I'll paste the left hash, and now we'll go back to our certificate and copy the hash that's on the right side. And by the way, this is also the hash of our original document, which we have timestamped previously. Now I concatenate both of these hashes, and we'll get the result, and this resulting hash ends with 8473AB. Now we have to look in the certificate where the next level indentation starts. And it starts here at this right node. And you can see that this right node has a specific hash. And we have to verify that this is a hash that we've just calculated. So far, so good. Everything checks out. Now we repeat the whole process, but one indention level up. Now, once again, we start with the left node here and copy the value. Then we go back to our calculator and paste it. And now in the certificate for the same indention level, we have to find the matching right hash, which is here. We also copy that, go to our online calculator, and paste it. Now we hit calculate, and we will see the resulting hash. This resulting hash should be in the certificate. And we will go and check if that's the case. And it should be here one indention level up. So everything works, everything checks out. But now what you really would want to do is you would want to calculate the whole proof until you end up with a root hash. So the root hash is a row which has a type key. It's here, it's always on the top. Of course, this would take some time and for the sake of this video, we'll just assume that we verified the whole proof already. So far, we have verified that our document that we have timestamped is represented by the root hash. But there's one final step which we have to do. We have to verify that the root hash was actually timestamped. 
And to do that, we will go to the first page of our document, of our certificate, and we will copy and paste the transaction hash. This is a transaction in which our root hash was embedded. Then we open up an Ethereum blockchain explorer. Here I am using isascan.io. We search for this transaction hash. We expand the details. And you can see there's some input data. And this input data is actually exactly the root hash that we've looked for. So we can double check. It's ending in AF7561. And indeed, it's exactly the root hash. Now there's also a timestamp here. It's 9 o'clock AM UTC, and this is also what's stated here on the certificate. So that's the whole proof. We've proven that our original document is represented under the root hash. And we've also proven that this root hash was actually embedded in the Ethereum blockchain. We've also seen at which time and at which date it was embedded. And that's the whole proof. And that's how you verify a timestamp independent of origin stamp.